what is up count gang all right we got another problem here it says solve the initial value problem and determine where the solution obtains a maximum or is it a minimum value yeah minimum value okay how are we going to do this well let's go ahead and just solve it for the general solution then we can find the particular solution and then we can figure out where the minimum value is so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to divide i'm going to factor out of y squared we want to get the y squared or the y's and the x's on opposite sides basically so this is going to be y squared, obviously, 2 plus x, and then we can divide by y squared. I'm going to write this also, dy dx, because I like it more like this, for this method at least. So then, of course, we're going to move this over. So 1 over y squared dy is equal to 2 plus x dx. Then if we take the integral of both sides, whew, I'm going to have to think about this one. I always hate when I get this. Okay, so what, in it, what what derivative would make it? I think it's one over, I think it's just negative y to the negative one, right? As equal to, I'm gonna check that. Yes, I did get that right, okay. It's kind of confusing, I always get this stuck up. You can also write it as negative one over y, that's probably easier. Um, integrating this, so uh, yeah, that's pretty simple. So it's gonna be two x plus one over, uh, one over two x squared plus c, of course. I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by 2 just to make it a little simpler. So negative 2 1 over y is equal to 4x plus x squared plus c. c stays the same. Okay, how are we going to do this? Well, we kind of have to... Let's go ahead and... Uh, <laughs> that's funny. I don't know why I did that, actually. Okay, uh, you can take the inverse of both sides. So negative y over 2 is equal to 1 over or x plus x squared plus c, and then multiply by negative 2, so y is equal to negative 2 over x squared plus 4x plus c. Great. Uh, that's right? Yeah, that's right. Of course it's right. Okay. Now let's go ahead and find our uh, specific solution. What we do is we plug in y0 equal to 1, so y of 0 is equal to 1, and then what would this be equal to if it's 0? So it's going to be negative 2 over 0 plus 0 plus c. So then uh, to figure that out, obviously c is just going to be equal to negative 2. So our equation is going to be y is not that. It's equal to negative 2 over x squared plus 4x minus 2. That's our equation. Nice job. We did it. OK, now we want to find out where it obtains its maximum value. Uh, to do that, we look at y prime, uh, just like we did calc 1. So, let's figure this out. We don't even need this, really. Although, I'm pretty sure you could probably use it. Uh, probably to find asymptotes or something. Okay, so let's just look at this. Alright? Actually, we're going to need it later, you're right. But Okay, so let's go back to this here. y prime is equal to y squared 2 plus x. So, of course, you're going to know where a maximum or minimum value is by finding where the derivative is equal to 0. So, that means that y is equal to 0 is either is a point or x is equal to negative 2. Okay, so what happens when we do y is equal to 0? Well, let's go down here. y is equal to 0. Oh, okay, so y is equal to 0. If y is equal to 0, um, we're looking at this function. You're going to notice that x is going to need to be like approaching infinity for y to be 0 here. Get scared. <laughs> okay, so it's never really going to approach 0, right? For it to approach zero, this x would basically need to be infinity, uh, which is like not something we talk about in math. So uh, let's just say we have asymptotes here at y is equal to zero. There's going to be a horizontal asymptote. But then x is equal to negative two. Well, OK, x is equal to negative two. It's going to be some sort of slope thing. Right? So what is it going to be? Uh, I don't really want to take the second derivative of this. So we can just uh, we can kind of just figure it out by plugging in numbers, right? All right, so let's do negative 2. Uh, oh, let's see. Why is negative 2? So we'll do negative 2 over, so it'll be 4 minus 8. So 4 minus 8, negative 4 minus 6. So it'll be 1 third is where that's at. So let's see why negative 1. This is like really early calc stuff one. This will be negative 2 over negative 1 minus 4. Oh, wait, so this will be 1 minus 4. So negative 3 minus 5. Uh, what is this, two-fifths? How big is that? That doesn't seem right. I feel like it went up. Am I wrong? Pro 
probably. Okay, and let's. <laughs> I don't know. Why of negative three? Let's see what happens when we do that. So this will be negative two over. So it'll be nine minus twelve. So negative three minus two. So this will be negative five again. So this will also be two fifths. As one. Oh no, two fifths is okay. I'm oh brain dead today. Okay, I thought two fifths was smaller than one third. I don't know why. So that means that it's going to be a relative minimum. It's going to look like this, and this is uh, this is negative two uh, one third. Okay, so that's where it obtains a relative minimum, and there you go. Um, the other, the actual graph it's going to look something like this, where you have a horizontal asymptotes at uh, y is equal to zero. So boom, 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 boom. And then around the max like negative two, so it's going to go like that. And there are going to be vertical asymptotes where x is equal to zero, which is like some weird fraction numbers, and then it's going to come up like this. Yep. All right, so that's how you uh, solve this kind of problem. That's how you find a relative min. Yeah, so I hope you guys learned something. Stick around for some more uh, differential equations. Some lady just looked at me.